Okay, I've had it once and for all with global warming. That's it. Global warming is going to have to be stopped. I don't mean in the next 50 years, or the next 10 years, or in 2013, but right now. No more studies, no more excuses. End it. Reason for this newfound motivation? Is it the plight of the cute little polar bears? Not one little bit. Those things grow up and they'll rip your throat out as soon as look at you. What about Kansas going from this to this? Nope, not bad either. Kansas becoming a desert would not make it any less boring to drive across, which I've done altogether too many times. What about rising sea levels flooding New York? In my opinion, that would be one way of keeping the streets clean if they became tidal. And those rude New York taxi drivers that seemed intent in running me off the road last time I visited there? Perhaps they'd be a bit more friendly if they were pulling a gondola along Fifth Avenue and serenading us by singing operatic arias for their tip. What about all those confused plants moving north to get away from the heat? Well, good luck to them. They'll probably get treated a lot better in Canada than they will here. So Norway and Scotland will become the new Champagne region. They'll put those snooty French wine snobs in their place. Perhaps a magnum of Glasgow Demi Sec will go, go well with your haggis, monsieur. Or a glass of the Fjord Brut with your pickled herring, madam. Sounds good to me. What happens if we lose all that sea ice in Antarctica? The penguins won't have to walk so far. Instead of the march of the penguins, we'll have the short stroll of the penguins. They'll be as happy as the clams. Speaking of sea creatures, what about the poor old coral? Well, I think it looks prettier white instead of all those garish colours. Much more Christmassy. So what if the ants and the crocodiles take over the planet? Because theirs before we came along. They could hardly make a worse mess of it than we have. Besides, mosquitoes with three-foot wingspans are easier to swap. No, what's getting my goat is this. The humble cocoa pod. It is becoming endangered. It grows in a very narrow range of climatic conditions, and the zones that support it are shrinking because of global warming. Normally, I wouldn't care two hoots about a global grown pea pod on steroids. But you see, the seeds inside this pod are what they make into chocolate. Imagine Valentine's Day without chocolate. It would be like Thanksgiving without turkey. But scientists are saying that thanks to global warming and plant diseases, a chocolate shortage for future holidays is a probability. Americans alone spent $700 million on chocolates for Valentine. Manufacturers are currently producing 3.7 million metric tons of the crop, an amount that is expected to be too small to satisfy customers by 2020. But the cocoa bean could already be in danger according to Mars Incorporated scientists. The plant only thrives in a thin strip around the equator, where climate change has exacerbated weather patterns causing high winds, droughts and floods. Devastating diseases such as frosty pod rot are sweeping through Latin America, killing trees. Experts fear that other ailments, such as which is broom and the cocoa pod borer, could destroy much of the rest of the crop. We in the chocolate industry worry that without fast action on a number of fronts, the cocoa farming could slide into a downward spiral, said Mars scientists. But without chocolate, how are we guys ever going to get laid if we can't buy the ladies with some chocolates? Use our natural charm? Yeah, right, forget that. And what happens to us then when we get all depressed about not getting laid and have no chocolates to eat to help us snap ourselves out of it? And we would have to get drunk and end up the next morning with a hangover. And that would make us even more depressed as well as being irritable. What about the ladies? They're not getting their free chocolates, nor are they getting laid. And now there's a bunch of irritable men around. So they're likely to get drunk too. So the human species will go on, but we won't be as much fun because we won't remember how it happened. How will Harry Potter recover from the dementia attack without chocolate? For that matter, what will the Easter Bunny do without chocolate eggs to deliver? You see, the very foundations of our society are already are being eroded. I mean to say, where are all those increased crop yields we were promised by the, all the extra carbon dioxide that the oil companies' coal and gas uh, uh, concerns are pumping into our atmosphere? We should be getting bumper crops of chocolate. It turns out the reverse has happened. As demand goes up and supply goes down, Prices will be soaring to the point where only the 1% will be able to afford an M&M. This situation is absolutely intolerable. 
We must act now to end global warming for a civilization without chocolate is a doomed civilization. Just ask the Mayans. Oh yeah, we can't. They're all dead. They probably ran out of chocolate. See, that proves my point right there. We don't fix it. Forget it about investing in gold bars. Buy Mars bars. So join my campaign now to end the upcoming chocolate disaster. End global warming today.